Okay. Hello. How are you? Hi. Hi. This is one of the first Earthy Joint chats, so I'm super excited to have Raquel here. Hi, everyone. I'm Raquel, and um, I am in LA, on Tongva land, um, land of the Geese Nation. I'm an Afro-Indigenous midwife from El Salvador and Colombia that was born here in LA. So my ancestors are, are, are from all over, came through the Americas predominantly. And um, I'm a full spectrum midwife. I do a variety of different things around, around the uterus. And for this conversation, I think it's important to acknowledge like my elders and the lineage of like spiritual healers and traditions that have helped me and that have, have given me the just like honored to learn from them. I want to pay respect to the Thule Nation who are about three hours from LA indigenous tribes here on Tuli Nan, so the Tuli Nation, and my elder Olivia Chumacero, and then my Ifa community, Ile Afedefeo, Orumila Afedefeo, and my Baba Fasegun and Ia Fayomi, to kind of give a, a, a rounded base, a little bit of where I'm speaking from, and we can kind of get into that in a little bit, so, That's yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> So I originally contacted Raquel because I did a poll on Instagram and a lot of people wanted me to talk about saging, smudging, Palo Santo, and I felt it was important for me to tell the history of it and pay respect to the history of smudging because it is an indigenous practice and it's often culturally appropriated. I wanted to spread the right information because it is something that I practice and I can go into that in another video. However, it's a lot going on with that, that whole ritual. We'll get into that a little bit later. So for those who don't know, what is smudging? Yeah, so smudging is the process of, I would say calling on a, on a plant and burning the plant specifically to clear, to cleanse, and to really kind of bring yourself into an, an alignment with um, all of creation and with God creator and the seven sacred directions. And it's a way of anchoring yourself into the fact that we are not separate from, from each other, from nature, that it's all within us. And so it's kind of creating that clearing of your space to help bring in a centered self, I would say. Um, and then there's different aspects of smudging as far as, again, same concept, like when people are, are smudging, you know, their belongings or um, their house, it's the same kind of concept, right? That you're not separate from your house, you're not separate from your belongings, that, that you're blessing them. And what are we really doing when we're blessing something is we're coming back into the notion that it is a consciousness, that there's aspects of creator that there are aspects of consciousness within whatever you're doing and bringing that into alignment. It's more than just an act, mm -hmm. you know, like chewing gum is more than just like, oh, I'm gonna chew some gum right now. Right. Like there's there's a whole alignment and at least tradition with the act and the ritual because you're calling on several different components, you know, not only you calling on the plant itself, but the use of sacred fire. And I definitely want to say that, you know, I am not specifically part of one tribe. And so each tribe, especially within the Americas, have their own ways of relating and communicating and different ways of expressing what smudging means for them. How did you learn yeah. about smudging? I don't think it was something I ever grew up doing with my family. And I was, you know, in preparation for this talk, I was like think, really thinking about that. In what I share in this moment, I'm sharing from a place of what I've learned from the elders that I've held and what I've learned and am continuing to learn um, from also my guides and my ancestors. I grew up with like lots of incense. So my family did like, you know, occasionally burn incense, which in a sense can be a different form of, of smudging. 
I would say that my first introduction to like native plants was through hiking. We did a lot of hiking growing up, always being curious about like what plant that is on the hike or whatnot. But I hadn't yet really connected with the practice of, of smudging as an ancestral practice for me. So college, I lived in a co-op in Santa Barbara for a little bit. And one of my roommates or housemates, shout out to Costanza Rampini, would always be burning sage. And initially, I definitely remember being like, this is a really intense smell. Like, what is going on here? Right. Same. And, you know, there's like, I think this like myth, but not, myth, you know, there's like this thing that it's like, oh, if, if you despise the smell of sage, then like you really need it. Like you got some demons in you kind of thing. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, <laughs> That's like kind of a, like, I think like a running <laughs> joke, like, yeah. you know, like, well, let me save you more. I love um, that. <laughs> but she was the first one who I encountered just doing it, mm-hmm. you know, without any kind of, you know, mm, understanding of it. As I came back into connecting with like my, my indigeneity within the Americas and connecting with different groups people who do temazcal, so sweat lodge ceremonies mm-hmm. here in LA, then that's when I started to really begin to learn about the intelligence of white sage and the you know the plants used for smudging. And then connecting through that, it was really like my, the teachings that I've, I've received from my elder Olivia Chura, Chumacero, who's um, from the Saramuri tribe of the Copper Canyon. I think it was, it's really her, her influence and her classes that that introduced me to everything is medicine and and the con like really the consciousness of, of plants. Right, right. Yeah, and and all the different ways in which they they are utilized. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you know for you particularly that the smudging is work? So I can give you an example. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. say a guest came to your home and. You knew spiritually, I know with me and we I can discern energies and I can tell if there is a negative energy attached to someone. So let's say they leave your home and you just feel the energy in your home is just unbalanced and you decide to smudge. What would that process look like for you? And how do you know that it's working? Hmm. Wow, that's such an interesting component because I'm like, for me, there's several different layers of like, how I even set up my home Mm -hmm. before even inviting people in and really like how are we inviting people in you know that 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 my home and I honor my home as an entity in and of itself Mm -hmm. and I'm at my family's house right now um (laughs) so it's my home and it's not my home um but I think like to keep it simple and to not go into all the like esoteric dimensional Mm-hmm. things that we couldn't go into right. when we're having this type of conversation I would say because <laughs> I, I can go there I'm like Woo, right. I really want to take me there um, but I think it's like you know if you one I think it's with the intention mm-hmm. you know, it's like what is your relationship with the plant and really again it's about centering yourself and coming back right so it's about realizing that the plant is helping you the process of smudging is helping you Mm -hmm. to anchor back into the truth of who you are i'm kind of also like why are we getting to the point where we're letting somebody throw us off that much Mm -hmm. right if they're coming in to me that's like okay let me reestablish my boundaries and i feel like in that moment if you're smudging after someone leaves right you know then it's like reevaluating what your boundaries are also with that person Mm -hmm. um I think there's also instances like if there are people who are working, you know, like maybe massage therapists or or healers or things like that, that there's a certain sense of like, we want to clear the space Mm -hmm. before and after maybe a session, or maybe we want to clear an anchor before we're about to have like this kind, this talk, this call or whatever it may be. Then again, it's all about like, how are we centering ourselves? Right. Um, and right. in that process and, and what it's also like what are you praying for a plant has its own consciousness so it's going to do what it needs to do mm-hmm. but it's going to in fact like as how is it working it's like how are you relating to how you're using this plant 
are you mindlessly just like smudging around because you think it's something that the plant is just magic and it's just gonna work for you and you don't have to put any work in yourself mm -hmm. then you know you got to look at, at at that but if you're like okay please help me so that i stay in my center so that you know i have a clear connected space that i can remain grounded to my guides and my ancestors or whoever you call on for your support then the intention of like it's going to be much um much clearer and you're going to feel it because again it's not separate from you mm -hmm. and i think that's where sometimes we get confused that people are like trying to grasp onto the tools like is this one going to work is this one going to work is that right. going to work and not like being like hey are you doing the work within yourself to my Ile would always say like or my Baba would say like bring your ori your head and your consciousness mm -hmm. into alignment with mm -hmm. what you're trying to do and create mm -hmm. okay so cultural yeah. appropriation smudging mm -hmm. and over harvesting let's get into that conversation how do you feel about the cultural appropriation when it comes to these indigenous practices I didn't grow up within a tribal community so it's something that I I have to check in for myself True, continuously, yeah. right? Even though this practice coming from the coming, you know, in this lifetime, you know, the majority of my ancestors are coming from the Americas. I say I'm 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 proud to be all American because I'm from South America, Central America, and North America. Like I'm right. literally all American. And then my ancestors have come in willingly and unwillingly <laughs> through <laughs> through various parts of other of the continents, but through right. the Americas. So I have to recognize that in my lineage, I hold both, mm -hmm. right? I hold the deep ancestral memory of that these practices are mine. Mm -hmm. And I hold the fact that these practices are also not mine. Right. And so how do I come in to really look at these practices and these rituals and these relationships, mm -hmm. really these relationships with integrity. Mm -hmm. um, so when I think about cultural appropriation or when I, you know, and say it, there's a lot of like internal kind of like sadness mm -hmm. that comes up and like a, <sighs> right, you know, because in looking at the relationships that we have with our indigenous people around the world meaning like indigenous especially with people who are still really living in their tribal communities you know not discounting that many of us have been mixed mm -hmm. and we're coming into this more diasporic we are all from all over i think that that hurts is when we are saying we're when we're trying to use sage or use palo santo or use cedar or use any of the sacred plants for medicine and yet we're not standing with our indigenous allies our indigenous relatives i would say you know in many indigenous co communities you have the term all my relations right and so that term extends beyond just human form like how all my relations that means like this plant is a, is in relationship with me this plant is what we say a plant fester right a plant guy this other being is, is is in relationship to me this other tribal member is i think that's why in, in many communities of color or communities of culture you know it's like after a certain thing everybody's either an auntie or uncle tia, tio. it's kind of that concept that's been spread out so it hurts me or it hurts to feel that we're using this but then having a hard time understanding why indigenous sovereignty is important and mm -hmm. to make that call to the senator or to you know donate or to share or to just respect the plant you know um that component of appropriation that that initially just comes to mind when you're talking i feel like there was a second part of that question that i was like i don't know okay i was so into what you were saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just brought something to my mind because you are a person of, of color mm -hmm. but people of color can appropriate mm -hmm. you know this practice too because it's, it's not everyone just because we're all people of color. As um, an African-American, it was important for me to have this discussion because I didn't want to appropriate this practice. My family is New Orleans Creole originally. So 
been a mixture of so many cultures, but um, I'm learning my history similar to what you went through. In New Orleans, the African community and Native Americans were comrades. They worked together in so many different ways. So it's very important for me to respect and remember that because I know that they are my brothers and sisters. Over harvesting, for people who don't know what that is, what does that even mean? Yeah. There's a process when you go and you have a relationship with the plant. You recognize that the plant has consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, even the plants behind me, if I, I recognize that they have consciousness, they're here supporting me. This is a, what we would call a purple sage or sometimes lavender sage behind me. The plant has consciousness. And so that I know that this plant next to me right here on this side also has consciousness. So in that framework, I'm going to understand when, you know, that plant needs a haircut, when when I have a relationship, right? <laughs> when they need water, right, we right. communicate with each other. And, and then they have specific things that they also teach us on different esoteric levels or dimensional levels or for our healing. We, one, capitalism has kind of made it really accessible, kind of had the framework of the idea that everything can be monetized and everything can just be out for everybody's purpose and for whenever you need it, right? So that creates a mass production, again, because people are, are then disconnected from their own capacity to heal, and then they start looking to other resources to heal themselves, right? right. And to come back into alignment. So then there's these mass sage plants growing, or that people are just going out into nature and just taking and taking and taking and taking from the plant and then not giving back to the surrounding area, right? Not giving back, remembering that this plant is part of an ecosystem mm -hmm. and it is unnatural to have that access to that plant maybe all the time. So then we come up with, you know, there's a certain level of like, in the fact that plants have have consciousness, mm -hmm. if we understand that, if we also understand that all human beings, all beings, have different cycles of growth, different cycles of peak maturity, you know, you're not going to ask a five-year-old to do a lecture on biophysics, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to ask a five-year-old or a six-year-old to, you know, um, cook you a delicious meal, right? You understand that a five-year-old has their expertise as a five-year-old. You might ask them to help you play and access your joy, mm -hmm. right? So when we're when we're over harvesting these plants, and I say this for white sage, I also say this a lot for Palo Santo, which is a tree, that these plants are cultivated at different times when they haven't reached their peak maturity often. Mm -hmm. And then the wisdom of how their medicine is coming through is different because the relationship is not there and the respect of the ecosystem that they are connected to, the earth, the water, all the other plants that they feed, right? All the other bees and things that they nourish aren't, isn't there. Um, and then, um, I may have repeated this already, but then their maturity level, like technically a Palo Santo tree originally when using it, it, it was used after the tree itself died. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a long time for a tree. So when we're like cutting it down. Don't know, this is um, a Palo Santo. Palo Santo. Yes, yeah, it comes in those sticks often. Mm -hmm. For Palo Santo, it's like asking that five-year-old to cook you a dinner. You're asking that that five-year-old tree that we're just gonna cut down right now, hasn't re reached its peak maturity to then cleanse your home and be present for you in this way that it will because it has the ancestral wisdom of its own to do that but then the integrity of the medicine it carries plus your relationship with it is diluted mm -hmm. you know um and then not to mention i think again with the idea of capitalism it's like we forget that these plants um one lend to an ecosystem mm -hmm. and that they're not just for us you know that the bees the bugs that the hummingbirds mm -hmm. that all these other beings also need these plants 
right and so when we're just over consuming them then again we're separating ourselves from being like no this is just for for human we need this as humans when it's like actually you don't you know Mm -hmm. um and then it creates an over dependence i think with the over harvesting again it's depleting the earth and it creates an over dependence on things that we wouldn't normally have access to having access to those things all the time so you don't appreciate them you know it's like you would do a sage harvest and you you know you would use it Mm -hmm. and then you may not have another harvest until next year you know so it's like you're gonna use something else Mm -hmm. and same thing just like you're saying big love for new orleans i spent some time out there love that love that space that town that community um and brought me a lot of medicine Mm -hmm. um and like you're saying like throughout the americas throughout the world people have been trading before even even before slavery even before colonization our people were taking trips and taking voyages and taking journeys all the time and indigenous peoples of all the world weren't inherently selfish with their information so when somebody was taking a voyage they understood oh i gotta bring i gotta bring my medicine with me so let's harvest some sage so that i can trade it with somebody else Mm -hmm. so then if you're coming in to then receiving that medicine because you traded it ancestrally right then you're going to even teach treat that with even more preciousness because maybe you know maybe you had an interaction with right with someone from central america or north america who has an abundance of sage because it's it's a native plant to Mm -hmm. southwest right and to you know mexico that that part of the america and then maybe yeah maybe you're an african coming in and coming into trade maybe you're coming in from asia to trade Maybe you're coming in from one of the islands where sage doesn't grow. Mm -hmm. So when you receive that sage, you're like, this is precious. Like, okay, I'm going to learn how to use this correctly. And I'm going to use it like, you know, sparingly because I don't know when I'm going back to to Mexico. I don't know when I'm going back to get this plant. So then there's like, and then we've we've lost respect in that way because we get it so easily, you know, because it's so harvested without the consciousness behind it mm-hmm. um, yeah <laughs> i have uh, some white sage here like and i received this from my therapist and i have a, a homework assignment ritual that i use this for mm-hmm. um but then i saw on twitter the conversation about over harvesting and a lot of people were saying you need to stop burning sage and harvest natural for those who want to stop what are some alternatives and then for those who have some apprehension of stopping a way that they should go about getting the mm-hmm. sage. Yeah, I have some here too. Mine's in more leaf form. It's not bundled. Yours is bundled. bundled yeah. Where, you know, mine is like, here's the, in here. Right. You can see that. So it's just like a little, the leaves, very small amount. That's probably maybe like one or two leaves in there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think, I mean, if you have a bundle right now, like, and you just bought it, one, I don't want to encourage you to be like feeling shameful all of a sudden, right? You're like, oh no, I have I, I know. I'm like, How are you? My it? therapist gives it just to me. <laughs> yeah. Shame is not helpful. Mm-hmm. And then we do have to recognize these moments of like, you have to ask yourself, what do I really stand for? Right. Right. And what is an integrity for me, for you? And I totally can understand not knowing. I didn't know. You know, I'm learning. So I also just again wanting to not shame anybody for where they're at but wanting to be like how do you want to walk in this world Mm -hmm. and what perspectives do you hold and how and what type of relationship do you want to have with these plants and these medicines as well um so if you have your sage use it Mm -hmm. you know if you have a bundle use it right now um, don't not use it because you feel bad about where you, you bought it from Whole Foods or something. Like, don't feel bad. Right. Like, hey, don't throw it away. Don't, that's yeah, productive. don't throw it away. And if you do, like, give it back to the earth if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna do that. Right. <laughs> um, but use it, but with consciousness now, mm-hmm. especially if you're watching this right um, later or wherever. You know, 
you do it with consciousness and do it with intention. This planet is much, much wiser than we are. Wei Sage is much, much older as a part of the Earth because the Earth is much, much older than we are. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of like a grandparent in that, you know, and the grandparent in it doesn't want you to feel bad, but wants you to have some understanding. Definitely. So I think the, the best way to continue to use Sage is to build a relationship with it. If you can grow it yourself or try growing it, that's honestly the, the best thing you can do because you're giving it back to the earth, you're rebuilding the relationship, and you're nourishing so many other ecosystems, not just the ecosystem of yourself, but so many other ecosystems. If you don't have access to growing because you live in an apartment or, you know, you're, you know, maybe in, in the south or in the Midwest or somewhere where it doesn't really grow well and it doesn't like to grow, then finding, you know, relationships that other people who are growing and using sage sustainably, whether that be a friend, whether that be really investigating any type of organization that you're buying sage from, like where they're getting it, and are they giving it back? One, are they, you know, making respect to the land? Are they um, fostering, you know, maybe indigenous sovereignty for the support of the growth of this plant? And then really considering not using it. Like the indigenous community is really asking us and really as like some, as, as, as people, right, who have used this medicine for centuries, they have a very strong connection with the communication with this plant and yes. the consciousness of this plant. And they're seriously asking us that if you're not cultivating it yourself, to really consider using something else because the plant needs a break. Mm -hmm. it needs a break to re um, revitalize itself, to grow, to be in the earth, and to nourish itself. Yeah. So I think there's, you know, again, how are, are you wanting to like, that's like, you know, using a horse over and over again and never giving a horse a break that has been on trails that has been on this ride and then continuously being like no but i need you i need you i need you i need you yeah tired you know it's tired, tired. it needs it needs time it needs space it needs to cultivate its own healing and its own relationship with the earth you know just like us so, too like if we're, we're overworked and and tired and people asking us for help constantly it's like how can i help you i need to help myself first you need to help myself and my people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Which is like, it's other plant ancestors. I need to make sure I'm here for the bees that are having a hard time. I need to make sure I'm here for the hummingbirds that are also doing the work, right? Like, all of that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I think I'm I'm so blessed in, in connecting with, with my tradition. So I, Ifa, myself, is it, or Ifa is a, an a, a African spirituality. Mm -hmm. Um, from the Yoruba people, um, Western Nigeria. And so my Baba's connected. And so I have access to, you know, some of the things that, that um, as far as cleansing and clearing from that lineage as well. So in trying to find alternatives, one, I want to remind us that we all have ancestors. <laughs> we all have ancestors predating colonialism, predating slavery, that had indigenous practices of their own, mm -hmm. right? So it's like where you would go and maybe we had some indigenous people travel to Africa, they brought white sage, maybe from there, they were like, hey, I got Efun, Efun works. Efun is, you know, a clay. Efun does clearing too. So, you know, let's, let's trade. Right. So right. finding that, so I mean, right now, you know, again obviously with integrity Efun is a clay it can be used to bring coolness and peace and clear and Efun is used a lot to like you, you put it on your head you know for coolness and clarity mm -hmm. you can break it up and put it in, a, in like water and spray it around the house a lot of people clean their homes with a mixture of like water and Efun mm. um, and where do you get yours from? I get mine from a local market called the OBT market, and I've only had like there was like three of these about this big, mm, okay. you know. And I've had these this for almost three years 
have like the three of them <laughs> so yeah. it lasts a really long time, a long time yeah. you know so one i want to suggest like doing the investigation with your own ancestral lineage there's if you go back far enough and there's ways of you know that's a whole other conversation about connecting to your ancestors and like finding out that information right. but connecting to just the lands that you're from knowing what plants were native there no you know knowing what plants were around um and i know for a lot of us like in the diaspora sometimes we don't exactly know where our ancestors are from yeah. you know because there's been so much mixing and taking of people and you know things like that so you know you can use that phone <laughs> mm-hmm. and then finding the plants that are local to that area um so like in new orleans where it's that they have um that big old um is, is it, I think it's damiana or sometimes they call it uh the, it's like a bell mm-hmm. the yellow flower right with a bell very very strong medicine okay. i know it's very very strong medicine but you know sometimes there's like there's flower essences that we can use so every 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 community that you're in is you know has flowers and has native flowers Mm-hmm. So this is a rose water spray. I clearly did not make this myself, but if I really wanted to, I could have. Yeah. Right. But there's things like lavender that can be used. I love there's lavender. things like you know rosemary, um, and rosemary. Most rosemary can be burned. I think you know in getting in relationship with the plant, it um, it would be. I'm going to encourage always trying to have a relationship with the plant that you're using yeah. because that's going to make the, the use of it um, more potent. Even if you're not growing it yourself, finding out about it or just sitting, holding it, smelling it, exploring it, you know, ha- having some relationship with the plant itself and the plants that are around you. And then also expanding our notion that things have to be burned, mm-hmm. especially right now where there's a misuse of fire all over the world yeah right the amazons have been on fire at california right now it's high fire season for us so there's a lot of fires in the bay there's a lot of central you know central fires so like there's a big misuse of fire right now and so it it's also kind of like again is it congruent for me right now to just freely be burning stuff Mm -hmm. when you know when the earth is burning Mm -hmm. and like in this state of you know transformation maybe it's more appropriate to use water water is clearing water with plants is clearing to use the earth clay right that's what effun is the clay so again bridging our expansive that like traditionally we wouldn't have access to all these things all the time you know so but we have access to all the elements all the time so right. use all the other elements. Use water. Use wind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, use earth. Right? I know in some cultures, um, even brick mm-hmm. is like used like effun, like that red brick is used mm-hmm. to cleanse and clear. Right. So investigating and asking your guides and asking your support, you know, guide me, guide me, please, to the medicine that I'm gonna have be able to have the best relationship with with integrity so that I can use that space. So I think that is one one notion of like using that to clear, like investigating. Um, and then and then also knowing that it that's just a tool. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna help you if you aren't doing the internal work yourself and you aren't working, you know, in, you know, um, in Ifa, in our in the lineage that I'm connected to, Oderemo, you know, there's a prayer that we say, Ori pele atetenidan ateteke nikosa ko so sa tida ni gebele inorieni. Head, I praise you, you who will quickly bless your own, you who bless your your yourself, be, you who bless a person before divinity. No divinity bless a person without the sanction of the head right so what that's really talking about is like you can use all of this spray that you want and be like cleanse me of these demons and let that person away from me and you know you can can be doing all of that 
Mm-hmm. But if your head ain't right, right. If you're not sanctioning your own prayers, if you're not sanctioning your own blessings, mm-hmm. if you're not sanctioning the medicine that you're trying to use, right, then it's only it's a band aid. Yeah. On the bigger right. wound. Right. So like coming into those practices that also are going to help you to get we would say get your OD right, get your head right. Mm. You know, to get your head in alignment mm-hmm. right with your heart with your feet so that you're walking in integrity right. so that you know so that you're supporting yourself and there's so many ways to do that because again we have so many traditions around the world that support that process right you know so in any tradition too you know when you come to it i'm not saying that you can't be a full you know you can't be an asian person and be an indigenous practices or you can't be a white person and study indigenous practices or you can't be a black person and study you know these practices like Mm -hmm. or be a black person studying buddhism or you know whatever Mm -hmm. like there's a mixing of these traditions because we're coming into being a mixing of humanity yeah right and these traditions have always been wanted to be shared Mm -hmm. right it never necessarily wanted to be be hoarded Mm -hmm. but they had to be protected when they were being and continue to be attacked by certain people. So when you're approaching these traditions, whether it be an indigenous practice from the Americas or an indigenous practice from somewhere else, always looking at finding the history and really checking in about your integrity with being a good representation, a good model for that practice. Definitely. I love that prayer because it was spot on for what I'm going through right now. So I had a situation a couple of days ago. I think it's Friday. I had an energy and that's a whole nother conversation. Reaching out to me for forgiveness for when they were actually here physically on this earth. And I had my guard up. They opened a lot of doors and I freaked out, ran out the house. Now I have like my holy water and I have my sage and everything. But I just felt very uncomfortable. So my therapist called me because she knew she had like an instinct something was going wrong with me to check on me. And she was basically telling me that I can't just expect the sage and the spray to get rid of that energy. I have to absolutely forgive. And it's like a, a spiritual, emotional work that I have to do within myself. Have the confidence that I am protected as a child of God by my angels. Um then use that as sort of like a, a tool have a relationship with the sage so it's so funny that you mentioned that because it was spot on for what I'm going through right now I guess my last question would be I have a lot of subscribers who are Christian they have some hesitation with using these tools what advice would you give them as far as like being a little bit more open that it's okay yeah, well, like this is a, a, a guesstimate, but I have a I have lots of friends who are, I don't necessarily consider myself an herbalist mm-hmm. um, in the work that I do, but I definitely have a deep relationship with plants and they're, you know, <laughs> I, can hear, I can hear this like sage being like, girl, you <laughs> know so you work with plants, you know, like just like all of them are kind of- Like you're just being there. humble right now. Yeah, you're, you're just like, you know, it's something that I'm like, you, know how to work with plants so like don't even don't even try to hide and so the plants are really calling me to work with them but um I remember like having this conversation with my friend that there's about a hundred oh about a hundred or more plants Mm -hmm. listed in the bible Mm -hmm. right and I mean in church settings specifically Catholicism Mm -hmm. um you know, they're constantly like going up in the aisles and burning copal and burning the incense. Oh, so those are other alternatives. Copal, which is a tree resin. And that's kind of like a natural thing that the plant gives off, the tree gives off without harming it. You know, that you can kind of, if you ever see a tree, um, you know, sometimes the trees have those sap, that sap that you can like ask permission this is also asking permission from the tree about the relationship right giving an offering so i didn't talk about that giving offerings to the plant so just again having a communication right mm-hmm. um and you could use the tree resin yeah. and copal. same thing with incense there are certain incense that you can use as an alternative to white sage 
Um, but my point being, like, in, I think, in, Christ- in Christianity or, you know, in in that practice, for me, I know I'm coming from a different mindset. Like, my, you know, my, mm, I believe in God. I believe in creator. I believe in it as a, as a different framework. I have just a different perspective. The earth is also consciousness and you know um you know uh, all the all the spiritual practices that i practice are earth-based religious practices so i'm coming from that perspective and seeing that like you know in in god's creation god created earth and god created plants um and god created us and we are all in the embodiment of of god in one way or another the plant is i am this chair that i'm sitting in my sacred technology that is this computer that is allowing me to have this conversation with you right. you know um is also a godly creation in and of itself mm-hmm. in some form or another and so you know in that hesitancy mm-hmm. maybe finding out if you know looking for those plants that you know that they talk about in, in the bible myrrh copal frankincense for sure Love i know them. those three are like you know, are yeah, the top. my favorite scent. Yeah, so you can use those. You mm-hmm. know, especially if we're like trying to advocate taking a break from using white face, mm-hmm. and then you know, understanding too that like these are all all plants. The plants came and have an agreement with being of healing and support. Mm-hmm. So to a certain extent, like to not use their gift is a shame. Right. You know. Um, but using them respectfully, you wouldn't go to your neighbor and just like enter their house and borrow, you know, the proverbial cup of sugar mm-hmm. without asking for permission and, with, yeah. you know, without being for polite, polite. So let's not do that with our neighbors, our plant neighbors either. Um, and just being that, you know, that is, I feel like that is a Christian thing mm-hmm. is that kindness to your neighbor, that kindness to each other, mm-hmm. that it, extending of the heart and respecting each other's boundaries and from coming from an earth-based spiritual practice what i say is that you know um can we expand that to include Mm non-humans you know in that christian sense right and i think i'm sure there's there's and i I don't um i grew up seventh day adventist Mm -hmm. um okay yeah sda um you know but i definitely have not I've, although I've tried, I've definitely have not read the Bible through and through. But you know, like there's tons of stories where we're like, oh, that animal came up to Jesus, or you know, like there's that Christian sense, that Christian consciousness or Christ consciousness that is about love. And I have friends who are Christian that is about our connection with each other, and that doesn't just extend to humans. Right. So you know, in that that notion, like you're not, you know. I would say that you're not defying Jesus or you're not defying God by using one of these practices um, or using plants in this particular way that, you know, like, that's been around for centuries. That's right. been around around Christi- Christianity. And and so just extending, and extending that into that relationship, you know, God would be respectful with plants. God, mm-hmm. you know, even the story of Adam and Eve, that was a whole garden. They didn't have, like, you know, buildings or Western medicine, you know? Right. Like, they used the plants and everything around them at that point. Like, that's what was created first, mm-hmm. was plants and earth and animals. Definitely. So how are we in relationship with those and knowing that that's just an extension of God's creation? Right. Um, yeah, would be my, would, yeah, I think. Thank you for that. And do you have any closing thoughts that you want to just leave with everyone? Um, I think just be, you know, being gentle with yourself throughout these processes. Being gentle when you when you may run into incongruencies with other people, and you know, you may, especially after having this conversation now find that you're like oh okay my opinion's changing or oh i feel that way but do i have to have this conversation with them or slap the sage out of the hand from that person trying to buy it in the store and you <laughs> yeah. know like, right. like no you don't <laughs> mm-hmm. but you know you but so be gentle with yourself through your own process keep asking questions keep being curious um and knowing that there's no one right way mm-hmm. You know, even within the tribe, how sage is used 
is so different and so the same, you know? So just being open-minded to to all of those things and um, being gentle with yourself in your own process, I would say. And um, um, yeah, just continuing to, to, if I could leave with one thing, just being that like the earth, the earth is here, the plants are here, Mm-hmm. And you know they really, you know they really love humanity, and and they love to be sang to and connected to and spoken to, yeah. and uh, it makes me kind of like oh don't get me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me emotional, I've you know. But I think over everything lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that like. You know, in this disconnection, like they're sad about that disconnection too. Yeah. You know, definitely. That they want to have that connection with with people and with humans mm-hmm. because they see us as relatives as well. For sure. You know, so it's it's like it's like not not talking to a cousin that you haven't talked talked to but wish you could mm-hmm. for so long. You know, so just like. You know, and especially right now when there's so much, like, distancing of, like, don't touch, don't talk, don't, you know, like, don't breathe on anything. <laughs> um, like, the the plants need our breath. Mm-hmm. And the earth needs our breath. Mm-hmm. And we can do skin to skin mm-hmm. with the plant. Yeah. You know, as long as it's not poison oak, you know? Like, right. <laughs> we can touch yeah. something that's don't touch, touch random plants. Yeah. But, you know, you can, we can have that connection with the plants. And they want it as much as we do. For sure. Um, yeah. And they want to share their gifts. And, you know, they just, they just want to be in good relationship and have healthy boundaries with, with us. Just like we want to have healthy boundaries with each other, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, I think I think that's I think that's more so what they wanted me to share than you know, that's their wisdom. Yeah. But they want they want they want you to know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have my little three right here. I'm super <laughs> proud of them. And um <laughs> before this call I was actually just talking to them and seeing what they needed. I have like a plant identification app that tells me things that I'm still learning because I would kill all of my plants. It's <laughs> I would say a good one to two years to like really learn how to take care of them and really learn that they they seek you. Like this one, I can tell that it needed more water right here, the umbrella plant, because it was drooping at one point. And then as soon as I gave it water, it sprouted right up. I think I repotted one of them. Now a new leaf is growing. Um, so yeah, I love my babies. I name them. I speak for them and. <laughs> I just want the viewer to know it takes time and it takes practice and just keep learning and don't over overwater it. That's like the key thing. I saw something on Twitter. It was a really great quote. But look at your plants, like that human relationship. Just give it what it needs. You know, that's the little things is what matters. So don't overwater or overgive to it because it's just gonna be counterproductive if you do that. And I'm butchering the quote. I'll send it to you too. <laughs> but it's something along those lines. That was really helpful for me. It was a game changer once I read it because I would just constantly water it and I'm thinking I'm doing something good for it by giving it water. As humans, we could drink water all the time and it's nothing. But for them, that's not the proper way to handle them. So yeah, I'm I'm very proud of them. They look beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) But thank you so much, Raquel, for having this conversation. I really appreciate connecting with you and all the knowledge that you dropped. I think it'd be definitely beneficial for anyone who views this video. Comment below any questions, any thoughts that you have from this conversation, anything that you just left with that really touched you. Uh, let us know because, you know, I'm trying to hold back the tears. I just did my makeup. <laughs> they, they were coming. They were coming. <laughs> they were coming. This is amazing. And I look forward to having more conversations with you and with others as well and just sharing the knowledge and all of Raquel's information, her Instagram, her website, it'll be in the description box below. Yeah. And I'll send you some 
gonna link to some different info that people can connect with you about plants or other ways to support in you know indigenous people doing this work definitely for sure i'll put that in the description box as well awesome thank you you have a beautiful day thank you likewise bye bye